Welcome to New Orleans, the music city of the South. We are ready for some fantastic TA2 action. I'm joined here on the grid alongside Adam Andretti as we get ready to watch this race. And Adam, let's start up at the front here at this point because it's the first official poll for Rafa Matos and Nitro Motorsports. It is. I mean, for the fans that watch, you saw him start in that position at Road Atlanta, but that was according to practice times because of weather. This is an earned poll here, folks. He had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Connor Mo Mosack in that silver hair Camaro sharing the front row with them. This is an old rivalry as well, so this is going to be pretty exciting into turn one, DJ. Well, and speaking of old rivals of Rafa Matos, Thomas Merrill having a little bit of an off performance. He's down in 10th. You know, I actually was able to stop and talk to Mike Cope uh, on the way over here to do this intro. And, and Mike, you know, a gentleman that he is and the professional he is, he put his hand up. He put the wrong set of shocks on Thomas's car for qualifying yesterday. Didn't obviously catch that till after qualifying. We're going to look for that 26 Ford Mustang out of the Cope Racing Camp to go up front. Yeah, that's going to be one to watch for. We've got plenty of drivers out of position here at this point as well, so it's going to be very fascinating to see this field. A deceptively tricky track, hot conditions. It's not going to be the easiest way around, but I can tell you one thing. It is going to present absolutely fantastic racing. We've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything. Good is this? Look at this view from Lossowski. It brings all my fans, it brings the audience into the car with me. Speed turn 140 mile an hour entry speeds. The quickest and most efficient way for me to get information to my drivers is from using the VBOX HT2 system. Well, welcome to the NOLA Speed Tour Fan Walk Grid Walk here at NOLA Motorsports Park. Beautiful weather. I'm here with Jim Gallagher, who's been racing with us in the TA2 series with the Cube 3 architecture for several years. Now, Jim, I noticed you're kind of starting in the back. That's a little bit unusual for you. Uh, yeah, well, it's my first time here, so I actually am struggling here. And then I had some fuel pressure issues in qualifying. So between those two, yeah, I'm where I am. Nice. <laughs> but we, we expect you to move your way through. You've got an onboard camera for the Pro-Am, so make sure you wave to us out there. And good luck. Your wife's here, so good luck and be good out there. So Jim Gallagher. Then we come up here, and just to give you a little bit of scale, I am six foot three, 250 pounds. But this is Jared Odrick, first-round draft pick for the Miami Dolphins. We were together at Daytona with your Porsche Cup car. So happy to see you in TA2. Just, you know, once you're a, a true competitor like yourself, you just want to compete in everything, and you're really getting faster and faster every weekend. Yeah, I think the first two-thirds of the weekend uh, ends up me being uh, learning the basics uh, all over again every weekend. And uh, hearing the echo uh, is kind of uh, surreal, but at the same time, uh, I'm so appreciative to be around uh, so many great drivers, so many great competitors, and I am getting faster each weekend, and that's what I plan to do throughout the season. Nice. Now, if you know anything about professional athletes, you know that they're always playing a little bit injured, and sometimes they play even better. So show everybody your thumb. He actually broke his thumb in a spec racer forward just a few weeks ago at Summit Point. So look for Jared to move his way up through the field. We've got a lot of fans here. Check this out. I'm not sure how our producers are going to feel about that Bayern Munich shirt, but very nice. That's awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Are you having fun? Go Cards. I love it. Then we've got Tom Sheehan over here with the, the new Vixen Cycle Company, Vixen Cycles. Here's their website. you got to check it out. It's basically uh, motorcycle apparel and parts for the ladies. we got to love that. Then another one of our Pro-Am drivers, Keith Procha doing really well in the Pro-Am. He had a very good showing here in, I think, um, 2017 in the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series. And we've got Eric Caton here in the Skillman Auto Group. Then the teammate of Jared Odrick, Caleb Bacon with CB Motorsports. They have really stepped up their game this year. So watch out for Caleb Bacon out there with the Cortex, the core of performance car. 
Then Gavin Bichelle, right here in the number 28. Gavin Bichelle really turned – Doing really well this season. Sorry, I lost my connection. But doing really well here with the Team SLR M1 race car, Franklin Road. Then check this out, ladies and gentlemen. And just, it's like it's like looking back in time 30 years. Boris said Jr. standing by his car. And this is a really cool car because this is the HendrixCars.com. Set up the car, and this is to celebrate his dad. Boris said is going to be running a car like this. He thinks the last time in the Cup Series, but it's got to be pretty cool to be, uh, you know, doing the family proud in this car. I mean, yeah, it's an awesome opportunity to you know, represent HendrickCars.com and the, you know, it's the silver hair car, and you know, hopefully I can. We'll see how the the weekend goes, the race goes. Nice, and I love the white wheels. That's a great touch. The silver hair is done with the Hendrick cars. Check this out, the white wheels here. Barry Bowes, our Pro-Am leader, he's going to be racing with us in the National Series, but our Pro-Am leader doing really well. He'll be with us in the uh, Western Championship next weekend. It's odd to see Thomas Merrill this far back. And then Julian DaCosta, I noticed before, the, before he got here, they were having some problems with some brake duct work on that front right. So we got to make sure we watch that on the front right. Josh Hurley, who did such a great job yesterday in the announcer's booth, Adrian Lostowski, who's going to be running another camera with us, but I've been told we need to we need to hoof it up to the front. Ben Mayer doing really well. Cool to see Ben Mayer up here. Thomas Annunziata, who did so well last year. Tyler Gonzalez, our points leader right now in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Jake Drew, always really fast with silver hair here, somewhat new to the series, but we know that car is fast. Connor Mosack up here starting second on the front row. And then our Trans Am Pole Award winner, Rafa Matos, two-time Cube 3 Architecture Series, TA2 Series champion. Buttoning up right there. Unbelievable. So we're coming up to the front here to talk to Bill Knox. Bill Knox to lead us in our invocation. If you'll join me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise for this glorious day that we're having. And Father, we ask that you wrap your almighty's hands around the drivers. Father, that you keep them smart, patient. Most of all, Father, that you keep them safe. And also in your hands, Father, we ask that you hold the first responders our policemen and our military, Father, that they too may come home to their families every day. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Bill. So great. Now, Ella Grace Francis, I've heard some great things about you and your voice. To sing to, oh, actually, come on over here if you don't mind, to sing our national anthem. From the New Orleans area, Ella Grace Francis, take it away. From the New Orleans area, Ella Grace Francis, take it away. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Oh my gosh, wait, hold on here. Stay here because 
Ladies and gentlemen, we just put Ella Grace Francis through the ringer. We made her sing a very difficult song that you sang beautifully with about a 10-second delay. That had to be impossible. Well, I just tried to really sew it in, so thank you. Nice job. Well, nice job. Well, I'm going to send it back up to you to go through the grid up in the booth. That would have been impossible. Well, thank you, Ben, for that fantastic grid walk. It is DJ and Adam Andretti up here in the booth once again. We talked about a little bit of that uh, battle that we're going to see coming up through the field here at this point, Adam. But as we take a look here at your starting grid, there's a lot of drivers sort of out of position coming to mind here. Ben Meyer, Thomas Annunciata, uh, uh, and Thomas Merrill coming to mind of, of first and foremost. Yeah, I mean, and then we have the intangibles, too. We don't know about Julian DaCosta. He's our new guy in the field, too, and he's right back there. You don't think he's going to hitch on to that champion's rear bumper, do you, of Thomas Merrill and try and get to the front? Uh, but, yeah, you do see things like not as used to. The points leader, Tyler Gonzalez, is sitting there in fourth place. Um, and then you have, you know, uh, Adrian Vlostowski and Josh Hurley. They're bringing up. That's Those, those are the first two of the – um, you know, how chassis that are outside of the of the camp of Silverhair. So um, it, it's it's just shaping up to be one of those legendary classic Cube 3 architecture TA2 races, DJ. Yeah, very much so. As we continue to scroll down through the grid here at this point, you see Barry Bowes, your, T, your uh, Pro-Am championship leader, Boris said Jr. to his outside. Cable Bacon a little bit back in the order as well. Keith Prochuk on his 101st race. We were able to celebrate his 100th running back in uh, uh, Road Atlanta. Jared Odrick there in uh, Row 9 alongside Tom Sheehan and Jim Gallinger rounding out the rest of this field. It's going to be pretty fascinating, I think especially because this is a motorsports venue that's not necessarily known for a lot of overtaking opportunities so these drivers are going to have to take their time and really plan out their moves well yeah starts and restarts dj starts and restarts so this is the the start here um this is where it gets really tricky right uh, going into the run into turn one the inside is super bumpy so you can't take the full advantage of the braking zone like you can on the outside so you lay awake at nights here when you're Rafa Matos and you get to pick which side you're going to be on. You lay awake at night here on which is going to be the best side because if you noticed last year in the TA race, that speed was carried on the outside by Matthew Brabham, and he took the lead in the TA race holding the outside. So there's grip out there if you have the confidence to stick it out there. And I'm going to tell you right now, Connor Mosack and that 77 silver hair Chevrolet Camaro, he's got the confidence and he's got the skill level to do it. Yeah, he certainly does. And, and it's not uncommon of sight here to see three wide coming down into that corner but as well. So that could be a little bit of a flashpoint as things go. But let's talk about the back half of the circuit. Coming through the Bennett Bridge Hall S's, we normally think of that overtaking opportunity down into turn 13 as kind of one but you've really got to set up that line a lot more you better be there uh you better you better get that good run in the last two of the s's there in 11 and 12 especially 10 11 it really kind of starts back there in 10 if you can get to the power strong and carry that all the way through 11 you might if the, if the one in front of you wasn't able to do the same and had a little understeer a little oversteer and couldn't get to that throttle that's the only time that that door opens for you. Otherwise, you're kind of forcing something like we saw last year. And when it comes, desperate times comes for desperate measures, and those desperate times are when we're coming to that white flag and that checkered flag. Exactly. 37 laps here and 37 laps only to get things done. It's going to be very, very difficult. But another big storyline that we talked about yesterday and that Josh Hurley was giving us a lot of insight on was going to be tire wear, that you're going to have to watch your stuff. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday between Chris Dyson and Paul Menard. Absolutely. I mean, we uh, what kept us awake at night on Friday night was what package do we go with, right? We had a package, a suspension package for our car that really would pound the tire down and, and really get the thing to fire off and the car would fire off real quick. But we might, you know, suffer tire wear. Yesterday, we, we opted for the safer version, the more conservative version, and we suffered to fire off. And then, you know, by the time that the, the car came in, they were checked out. So uh, it, it's it's definitely, this is really one of the, when you look at our schedule at the beginning of the year, NOLA was one I checked the box as an intangible. I had no idea what to expect here because you cannot predict this event. Well, the one thing we can predict at this event, the most famous words in motorsport, and we throw down to Ben for that. Well, thank you very much. I have the honor of being here with Estelle La Bourgeois, who is a huge influencer. Now, Estelle, we were talking a little bit beforehand. I'm, I bet you my wife follows you, but tell everybody what your speciality is and how they can find you. Uh, 
know. I'm a style. Um, I've been on TikTok and Instagram for a little while. I do a lot of um, lifestyle and beauty content and just my day to day, what it looks like. Well, you are about to deliver the most famous words in motorsports. Take the mic and take it away, Estelle. Drivers, start your engines. Hey, nice job. All right. Engines fired up here at NOLA Motorsports Park. About six minutes until we go green flag racing. Everything going to be very, very cautious here. And as we talked about yesterday, going to be having to do a little bit of work on these tires to make sure they're, these Pirelli rubber are operating in their primary window. But with the heat as it is, you probably don't want to do too, too much. No, absolutely not. No, I mean, you're, you're going to basically, the, the TA2 tire comes up to temperature pretty easy. So a lot of that is just making sure that you're clean after qualifying and you didn't pick up any of the stuff, uh, you know, from coming in from qualifying. But you can really get a lot of heat in the tire through the brakes uh, without wearing the, the surface off. So if you get a lot of brake action, a lot of brake activity in there, then you're heating up the tire from the internal side of it. And that's really kind of when you're looking at a tire deck race, that's really honestly the best way to go, one of the better ways to go as far as getting your stuff up to temperature. Yeah, and they were going to see a lot of that on these opening laps to make sure they are able to do that. And obviously the other added benefit, getting the brakes up to temperature so you're able to stop the car in time. That's it. Yeah, these it, it's I, I make people laugh all the time. I was like, you know, the race brakes, they don't work good in the paddock, but they work really good out here because they need to be at a temperature. <laughs> right and if they're not at the temperature they just don't have the bite uh, yeah. that they're designed to have so as the cars are rolling out here uh, they're going to get the temperature in these things and like I said we're going to have you point out the three wide I forgot about our three wides here you know the three wides into turn ones can be quite quite interesting yeah, they really, really can, and it's going to make sure that drivers have to stay absolutely on their toes. And as we said, with a couple of drivers out of position here at this point, we keep talking about them, but Thomas Merrill, they're going to have to be fighting their way through, and it's going to be interesting to see what they are able to do here at this point. And welcome to our viewers from MAV TV. We are live at NOLA Motorsports Park for the TA2 series, the Cube 3 TA2 series, as we get everything ready to fire off. It is Rafa Mato starting on pole position with Connor Mozak to his outside. Jake Drew and Tyler Gonzalez will be lining up behind them. But before we get to the racing action, let's have Adam take us around for a lap around this fantastic circuit. This circuit guide is ready to roll. Let's take a look here at NOLA Motorsports Park here in Avondale, Louisiana for the NOLA Speed Tour Trans Am presented by Pirelli. You go down the long front straightaway here, primary passing zone right here is turn one. Really bumpy on the inside, so it's very difficult to get the car settled in. So you can hold speed on the outside and have the inside for turn two. You get into three, four, five. Five is another opportunity because you got to snooker yourself in there. It's a very late apex, so everyone leaves that entry wide open. If you're brave enough to stick it in there, as we saw Austin Green there, you could pull something off. Entering the S's, super, super fast in the S's. The bumps are critical. You see Thomas Merrill here, the one of the best in the business. It gets it wrong, and it happens easy. But if you get it wrong, too, your competitor up front might leave the door open for the next passing zone here in turn 14. As we clip through 15, 16, and 17 being next, really, really tight stuff, and you've got to get that good drive off 17 so you can make that passing zone in turn one work. And that was a lap at NOLA Motorsports Park. Well, there you heard it from Adam himself, where to be able to get this right, where you can get it wrong as well. Plenty of places to do it. And as we talked about, if you get things wrong here today, yes, there's grass around the outside, but there's a veritable swamp in the middle. So you may get yourself stuck even if you're not in the kitty litter. Yeah, I mean, there's reports we had Gator on the track yesterday. I didn't see it. You know, I wasn't uh, one of those that got to see that. But, um, yeah, th this is this is the Louisiana Swampland. That's why this is such a wavy track, which gives it that – Add a bit of character, right? You know, um, and it's the bumps. I, I, I said, I don't know how they did it, but they got them all in the wrong places for you. <laughs> you know, so they, but they nailed it. Like, you, it, it makes it such an added challenge. And it, it's it's such a compromised track with setup to, 
uh, your gear ratios in the gearbox to, I mean, even as a driver balancing your brake wear and your tire wear, um, that's what makes racing at NOLA Motorsports Park so exciting. Yeah, and what makes it also exciting here today is we don't have a repeat winner on the grid. You saw there Gar Robinson, Bucamonte, and Brent Cruz, your last three winners from that. And they're not here today, so we're going to be crowning a new champion no matter how this works. Taking a look at our onboard cameras, first and foremost, the number three, Adrian Lostowski, currently sits sixth in the championship. Always good to be able to ride on board with him. And Thomas Annunziata, he's going to be rolling off in about sixth place here at this point. He sits second in the points to young Tyler Gonzalez, as we talked about. He's had a couple of second places. He's had that consistency. Not been able to find the top step yet. Could this be his day? Any day could be Tyler's day um, because of how he's driving, right? I mean, that that's it. It's the consistency and the progression. He's been showing that. And when you're consistently keep knocking out those those finishes, that win is right around the corner. You know, and then once the win comes, then the snow will start to fall, right? Then it's going to be one after the other after the other. We've seen it with all the young talents that have come through the, the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series. Uh, from your Brent Cruz to Connor Zillage, uh you know, to to what we have sitting in the field here, Thomas Annunziata. He was he was a, a guy to beat here last year, all the way up until the race happened, and the thing wouldn't go from pole position. So um, so he ended up you know starting at the tail and fighting his way through last year. He's obviously rolling right now, so he's going to be in good shape, much better shape than he was last year at this time. So um, yeah, there's there's just there's so many drivers that have been, just been touching that top step, then they're right there to get it. Yeah, I think we're certainly ready for that as we also take a look at the Young Guns Championship as well as that outright championship. Tyler Gonzalez leading in both here at this point, but it is by no means a breakaway for the Young All-Star as everything is very, very close here at this point. Keep cycling through onboards. You saw Barry Bowes there, Jim Gallagher as well. That'll be a good view from uh, a little bit farther back in the field in the number 16 machine. So we'll be able to see what Jim can see, the Bellevue Washington driver as the field starts to form their way up here at this point. Two by two up at the front of the field, Rafa Matos and Connor Mosak getting ready to go as that is going to be Matos there in the white and blue machine leading the field around through uh, Mission, Fu Mission Foods turn 16 as he will bring the field around here to this point. They get ready to enter into the acceleration zone. All eyes go towards the flag stand as the green flag flies, and we are racing here in NOLA Motorsports Park. It looks like it's a perfectly clean getaway there for Mozak. There's that three wide that we were talking about a little bit earlier. That's going to be Jake Drew pucking his nose to the inside. He's going to go for it. Matos makes contact, bouncing off each other, coming into turn one. Wow, and they used up all the racetrack and then some DJ, but what a move by the youngster, Jake Drew, making it three wide, pinching that entrance like that and made it work. Uh, we got the 17 that is off there. That's Julian DaCosta, the youngster from the MX-5 Cup uh, Series. A rough start for him, so now it's just about collecting laps, staying calm and catching this group or, or waiting for that maybe that, that, that pack to to glow up, but they're still side-by-side side, all the way on the back side of this course there, DJ. And we've got a couple other cars off coming down through turn four, it looks like. Both of them look like they're still rolling here. We're going to jump on board with Thomas Annunziata, who's right in the thick of this fight, trying to take a poke to the inside there of the 26 of Thomas Merrill. Merrill already moving a couple of positions up in the field here as they run. Annunziata hunting on the back here as we enter into this section. I can tell you that both of those drivers that we saw go off to the outside of turn four have been able to get back under their own steam. It, so it doesn't look like we're going to have a problem. Is it just me, or is that hood flapping a little bit more than it should, Adam? Hey, you know, they, they, this place is so bumpy that everything's flapping more than it should. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I doubt that they have anything loose, but these are really lightweight bodies on them, and, and everything is, is, is really soft. So I just think it's through the bumping, and the thing's been sitting out there in the sun, so it's a little bit more flexible. As we're on board here with Adrian Vlaskowski, who is looks like he's sitting right around P8 right now, which is which is pretty solid for him as we come around. And Thomas Merrill is making his way already. He is really kind of wasting no time. And he's already uh, up into sixth place from P10 starting position. So just as his boss, Mike Cope, promised, we're going to see that uh, 
the 2022 champion come towards the front. Yeah, he is already starting to get a move on there. And uh, Jake Drew, as we said, leads at the front of the field with an absolutely inspired move to be able to get that position away from Rafa Matos. He and Matos banging doors coming down into the breaking zone. Connor Mozak sits third, then Meyer in fourth, and then it's Josh Hurley up into fifth place. Two Chevrolets first and third, and the rest of the top eight are all Ford Mustangs here at this point. I mean, honestly, if we'd have closed our eyes, we'd have just thought that was Connor Zilich making that move, right? I mean, Jake Drew, hats off to you, young man, that we can make that comparison. I know that those two have been friends for lifelong, raced against each other, but to put a move like that on the veteran and the champ of Rafa Matos and to pull it off clean is, is just absolutely rather impressive. So uh, great job. And, and, and the youngster like Jake Drew, this is the reason why Q3 Architecture is so jazzed about this TA2 series and why they wanted to be that title sponsor. It's the youngsters. It's the young talent. They want to feed that young talent and help that young talent get to the next step of their career. And our hat's off to that group for, for bringing that in. But we got a flat left front tire here on the 40 of Tyler Gonzalez, our points leader. This is a huge hit, now, DJ. We talk about that championship changing around there. You can see the discarded rubber coming off of it. This is going to be a huge blow to Tyler Gonzalez. We couldn't exactly tell who those two cars were off to the inside of turn four, or the outside of turn four, but now I think it's safe to assume that one of them was Gonzalez. He'll get back and on his way. He's going to be hoping for a yellow flag here to bunch the field back up. Absolutely. And what's tricky about turn four there, DJ, is the fast way around is a wide entry and a late apex. And when you're all bunched up at a start, you're best not to leave that a wide entry. You're best to try and keep that a tight apex. So a lot of times that'll converge and they'll bring together. And I think that's what happened down there. Not seeing it like, like we didn't see it, not seeing a replay. I'm just kind of speculating, knowing what kind of what the track delivers us over there. Well, you would be the expert on exactly how this would go, so I'm going to take your word for it there. A little bit of side-by-side -side farther back in the field here. That's Josh Early trying to make a move, going down to the inside here up in Mayer. See if he can get anything to play on the number 80, but good defense from Mayer. He's going to be able to hold that out and hold the line through the fast run of 6-7. and seven. Yeah, this over here is it becomes very follow the leader because there's no really steady braking unless someone makes a mistake in front of you as you come off of this, uh, I believe it's turn seven, and you're approaching this Bennett Bridge Hall S's, and then the approach to the S's are so fast. So you're just kind of, when you're sitting there buying your time, just hoping for a mistake from your competitors. And when you get to the pointy end of the field here, DJ, and you're in this top six, seven, man, nobody really makes mistakes. Yeah, nobody really does. As we keep watching here at this point, working down into turn 13, trying to see what they're able to do. It looks like Josh Hurley is the one to be able to try to be on the attack here, at least up in the top five. But he's got to watch out because he's got a very hungry Thomas Merrill behind him. Annunciata, though, has a little bit of pressure here from Adrian Lostowski. We jump on board with Annunciata. He's keeping his eyes ahead here and taking that wide, wide line all the way out over those rumble strips on the exit of Mission Foods turn 16. Yeah, when you, when you, if you've got a car that can handle those curves and you've set your ratios up that you're grabbing a gear past them, yeah, that is the line. That's where you have to go to keep the, keep the speed up and keep the momentum up in the car. It's like I was joking with, uh, with, with the Costa earlier. It comes from MX-5 Cup, and we've had a lot of successful MX-5 Cup drivers come in and transition to TA2 very easy. Wonderful pass. Adrian Blastowski shoves it in, gets it underneath as Uziato over unders him, but... Will this be another? Nope. And Enciana is going to go for that block to the inside. But this is what happens over there in turn three and four, DJ, is it's such a wide entry that you can really dive on up and you better be looking for the over-under. Yeah, you've got to watch out for that. An absolutely brilliant defense, as you said, from Annunciata, just able to pick up what he was doing, look for that crossover, slow the car down, and get it to absolutely jump off of the line. Lestowski, though, as a result of that battle, now finds himself with a little bit of a sniff of pressure here from Caleb Bacon as well, as now they come through the Bennett Bridge Hall S's. You can hear that throttle starting to roll off, getting onto the brake, getting those cars to rotate through that very, very difficult set. Yeah, it's it's this very difficult section. You said it best right there, DJ. And I, I want to throw a shout out too. You know, Jared Odrick is sitting there in P13. Uh, he started, you know, almost um, like I think he started 16th, and he's already fought his way up and in a great battle with Keith Prochek and Tom Sheehan. 
Yeah, he's doing a really, really good job, and that's a driver that we've been waiting to have that breakaway with. I, I had a chance to talk to him in Sebring, and he said, you know, I, I just felt a little overwhelmed. He'd done a lot of SCCA and club racing before that, never really felt like he had everything underneath him, and now we're finally seeing him come true because he is a quick, determined driver and athlete. Absolutely. I mean, anybody who's, who's made it to the professional level of any sports, you know, and obviously, you know, him in the NFL, you're driven. You're a driven individual. You know how to train. You know how to get your mindset. I mean, all sports is 90% of what's going on between our ears. And and he said it to me on the on the grid out there. He goes, yeah, you know, it's not instinctful to me yet. I have to remind myself on driving techniques. And it's not up until like the last third of the weekend that I'm starting to make those second nature. And he goes, so that's what you professionals in this sport that have been doing this your whole lives that's what you have coming natural. And I said, absolutely. I go, I'm not going to run a 40 like you run either. <laughs> yeah, I think I would definitely struggle a little bit to run a 40 against him or, or do anything athletic. But as we promised, uh, that's Caleb Bacon starting to make some moves on the back of Adrian Lostowski. You can touch a, see him make a little bit of a look in the mirror there. Lostowski looks like he's losing just a hair of touch with Annunciata, but able to gain it up there through the Bennett Bridge Hall S's. He's really starting to bring things in here at this point, and they're also bringing Gavin Beauchelet into this battle as well. So this is really starting to come a four-car train, and I'm a little surprised here. Thomas Annunciata kind of looking like the cork in the bottle. He really is. Like, I, I feel like Adrian definitely has pace on him. You know, if, if Adrian could go through those S's the way he wants to, uh, that's where he's going to make up a lot of his time. He, it feels like he's got a very good car for the transition, for the back and forth. And, you know, as we take a look back up front, as it's staring right at us in the face here, Rafa is playing the veteran game right here. Jake, Jake's never driven a race here at, at NOLA Motorsports Park. Rafa's driven at least here last year, so he knows what to expect on a tire deck. And I believe Rafa is just playing that long game. Is going to let him set the pace, let him believe that he's being challenged so that he pushes his car a little bit more. And the name of the game in these races, as you well know, DJ, it's the last 25 miles and where we're getting there. As uh, Bochel here at this point also working his way forward in this battle as they continue to go right now. Bacon trying to close in on the back of uh, Adrian Lostowski. And now welcome to the battle as well, Borisette Jr. It's now a five-car train. This is on board with Thomas Annunciata as he makes his way through. And that's Merrill and Hurley starting to slip out of the mirror here of him. But, yes, I mean... Annunciata is running, is the cork in the bottle here at this point, but he's also doing a fantastic defensive drive, keeping Lostowski behind him. He is fast in all the right areas that you can't pass him. That makes it impossible to pass him here at the track. And, you know, he's really good uh, coming off of the Mission Foods turn 16 and down this long straightaway into that really premier braking zone being turn one. Um, you know, and, and Adrian doesn't have enough of an edge on him in the S's to get him into here, into where we're at here with Thomas Merrill, who is again. He's making his way up quite nicely. Thomas Merrill still sitting there in P6 from his P10 starting position, and he's hounding your booth partner yesterday, Josh Hurley there, DJ. Yeah, he really is, and we're starting to see one of the things we talked about about this NOLA Motorsports Park, the difficulty to get a pass done. You have to string together 14, 15, 16, absolutely perfectly to even be able to be thinking about having a run down into Cube 3 Turn 1. Here comes Merrill thinking about it on Hurley. He's down to the inside. He's got it done. There he goes. Move Thomas Merrill up into fifth place. Thomas Merrill, the latest of the late breakers. Uh, when you when you get around Thomas, and, and they've, made, um, they've made some changes in that department underneath that car and and again uh, it, it shows to the competitor and, and the loyalty of, of Mike Cope and and what he does and, and the kind of program that he puts together but it's it's about making sure that that car's to the front and, and those partners he's had such great loyalty with have told him that listen you know we want to be there but when our game is right we'll let you know and we'll come back and we'll, we'll do what we did before and win championships and races so in the meantime you're watching Thomas just take full advantage of what was seemingly, you know, kind of a, an Achilles heel to their program here over maybe the last, uh, you know, half of the season or so. Yeah, and, and just able to take the fight to it here at this point with a good move like that. We also check back in on that battle for P7, Annunciata, Lostowski, Bacon, and Bochelle as they try to get their way ahead. Annunciata, clear track in front of him, driving in his rearview mirror a little bit. Let's keep our eyes here. I'm curious to see if we see Annunciata. Yep, there was a little bit of a glance in the rearview mirror there, just checking where Lostowski was. 
it doesn't seem like Annunziata is driving in his rearview mirror constantly, but he's doing just enough to make sure he knows where to be defensive. Yeah, he knows right where Adrian's at, and um, and he can feel him. He can feel that presence, and and uh, so yeah, no, he's he's not having to do much mirror driving. I think he's he's being patient because the car right now doesn't seem to be fully underneath Thomas. He seems to be struggling somewhere with the dynamics of that. Um, you know, whether it be understeer, or oversteer, I'm not seeing anything obvious there so maybe it's a little bit more on the understeer side but um yeah he seems to be struggling on that and adrian like just when we saw merrill get around josh hurley and literally just immediately put out and right on cue there's thomas merrill you don't even see josh in the screen anymore he's immediately pulled out and caught this group ahead i think if we see vlastowski get around thomas annunciata and open that door like like adrian's loose that was loose right there um, if they uh, get around that door, then, I mean, and Caleb is knocking on the door here. So Caleb is not exactly going to sit there and wait for this. He's probably like, Adrian, you've had your shot at Thomas. Now let this kid take a shot. Yeah, let me go ahead. Let me try to be able to get this run here at this point. But Merrill, as you said, closing down on Ben Mayer at this point. He is definitely going to try to make that run as much of a play as much as possible. But here is Lostowski. He's losing touch with Thomas Annunciata. And that looks like he may have to play defense to Bacon. And ex exactly, you know, Th Thomas may have encored the bottle, right? I mean, it might have just been something low tire pressure and the tires hadn't come up yet. And, and you know, lap eight's a little late for that to come on. But, you know, he's found a rhythm right now. And you said so well, DJ, and picked up on it, has pulled that gap on Adrian. Now Caleb is watching him walk away and, like, Caleb's going to get impatient here. But uh, you also brought up another name I want to mention because we haven't made mention, and he's having a fabulous weekend. The 15-year-old, Ben Mayer is doing a tremendous job all weekend long. I'm really, really impressed and proud of the young man and what he's doing here and, and uh, just excited to see that kind of progress and him sitting right off the podium just two tenths of a second behind Connor Mosak. And I think that gap may have even tighten down a little bit more as he is now all over the back of Mosak's rear fender here at this point. But now we've got something else to take into consideration. We've got a little bit of lap traffic to deal with here as Jake Drew is going to try to get around the number 97 there of Tom Sheehan. And oh, big lock up there for Drew as he tries to go down to the inside of the lapped car. That's not a big lockup. <laughs> no, no, no. These Pirelli tires, these PCRs are so durable. You'll flat spot the pavement before you flat spot the tire. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just getting a little bit more heat generated in it. But, yeah, see, this shows what a challenge it is to pass here, DJ. You're looking at a lap car. Now, Thomas Sheehan is going a lap down because he had to make an unscheduled pit stop. So he's trying and fighting to stay on the lead lap. Now, honestly, like with Thomas Sheehan, his pace is – been over the weekend about two seconds, second half, two seconds off of a Jake Drew. Even with that advantage, you see how Jake cannot get that run on Thomas Sheehan. So this is really going to make things interesting. He's trying to make a dive bomb into 14. Going to make it happen and bring the train with them. Yes, he is in the top three. You're going to make their way. Make that the top four trying to make their way on through. You just saw your leaders be able to work their way through Tom Sheehan. And here at this point, Jake Drew, Rafa Matos, Connor Mozak, and Ben Mayer are now all clear. But a little bit of a check up there for Thomas Merrill, potentially, as they come onto the front straightaway. Merrill's now been able to get clear. That's going to buy him even more time between himself and Josh Hurley. And look at that. Mayer, uh, that's Merrill kind of poking out a line there. I'm not sure if that was to get into the head there of Ben Mayer or if that was maybe just to get a little bit of clean air on the car. Someone of Thomas's experience certainly knows he's got a 15-year-old in front of him, and, and, and through that, you might get a little bit of vulnerability out of it. But at the same time, what I've learned about racing around these youngsters is they are super brave. They are super brave, and, and the consequences they have on the simulator is a reset button. So, um, so you know, it becomes very real out here, but they all race so good and clean and powerful, and it's just so fun to watch them come up through the ranks. And, and, and this has been that launching pad the TA2 series, is because of the talents that you have out there. You have to beat a Rafa Matos, you have to beat a Thomas Merrill, you have to beat Mike Skeen when he's here, you have to beat these drivers that are out there doing it, that have been doing it for a long time, making their living, feeding their families with this sport and with that talent that they have. You've done something. You've done something impressive, and the motorsports world notices. The motorsports world knows how good Rafa Matos is. They know how good Thomas Merrill is, so when you beat them, yeah, they're going to try and hire you. 
Yeah, exactly. And that is what we love to see here in this TA2 series, the established veterans that are the benchmark and the young rookies, the young guns coming up through. It's one of the reasons why we've loved to have the TA2 Young Gun Championship in the past couple of years. Although we are going to have a new leader in that, I would imagine by the end of it, as Tyler Gonzalez is uh, listed as 18th place right now. That was Annunciata able to get around Sheehan at the moment. Lostowski's going to get a little bit bottled up here, and that could buy Annunciata even more breathing room as they power down the main straightaway right now. We take a look back up at the front of the field because Rafa Matos looked like he had half a mind to making a move on Jake Drew. Yeah, he got, I tell you, uh, Adrian got really good drive off the last corner to get around the lap car of Thomas Sheehan, which was good. It kept, uh, you know, now that Thomas is officially a lap down, uh, he's going to not fight as hard for, for that because there's no dog in that fight. You know, he was fighting hard when the leaders were around because if the caution comes out, he gets to come back around and, like, nothing ever happened. So, um, so yeah, no, no, no bad blood there at all whatsoever. But, uh, but yeah, the, it seems like we kind of sorted out the top ten at this point, DJ. Um, they're, they're out there making the, making the laps now. We're only 11 laps into this 37-lap race, so um, we're, we're, we're barely to that. We're almost getting to that third of the race, that first third of the race to be under the mix here. Oh, we got a lead change. We got a lead change. Rafa Matos has found the lead around Jake Drew. So we, we, we don't have that caught right now, but maybe we'll get a replay on that. But Rafa Matos has found that lead around Jake Drew, and he... Ladies and gentlemen, has checking out. Yeah, he is. That gap about, let's call it uh, seven, eight, maybe even nine car lengths in between the, tr the two. And I've got to imagine that that was a little bit of a sneaky maneuver from Rafa Matos, probably down into turn three or four to be able to get that to play. As we saw Matos take a peek to the inside down into cube three, turn one, but didn't get it to work out. My, I got to, you know, share a, you know, basically share a race team with, with Rafa Matos over Peterson Racing, and, and he and I have been close for many, many years. But that all obviously brought us much closer. But one thing I always noticed and, and had such respect about Rafa is his understanding of tire, and that's simply could be where we're at. And what I was going back to referring to before, he's letting Jake run a pace, let him think that he's being threatened, and he's letting Jake slide around. So my, I'm suspect to what you're saying. Like I think also. That it was a little bit of a slate by Jake coming on in this front straightaway where Roth is getting that maximum drive because he took care of his tires at the right time. Same thing you saw out of the veteran here, Thomas Merrill, as the 26 car just went out of our screen. Thomas is the same way. He probably could have jumped through that field really quick at the beginning, but that would have been so detrimental to his tires, he wouldn't have had anything to fight for this victory at the end, and that's what he wants. He wants the W. He doesn't necessarily care about the, about who, how quick I passed all these cars. It's the W after 100 miles. Yeah, that's what he wants. That's what he's going for. And, and you saw that kind of collected approach in the way that he attacked. Of course, he slips and slides there coming through the corner a little bit just to uh, dispel our point maybe slightly. But at the same time, you saw that measured approach in the way that he attacked Josh Hurley. It was not an all-out blitz. It was much more of a calm, cool, collected way to get by. And we're seeing that again here as he tries to work his way on the number 80 of Meyer. Yeah, he's, he set up the youngster. You saw him set it right up back out there in 10. He's trying to leave a gap so he could get that run at the right time. Closes right up on the tail. Now, if he could get Ben that looking in his mirror, a mirror drive a little bit coming onto this front straightaway, make a little bit of a snake, the mistake, the door is going to open for the 2022 champ of Thomas Merrill. Yeah, let's see if he's able to do just that as they come through Mission Foods turn 16 onto the power here at this point. The draft going to be in full effect, and look at that gap for Rafa Matos. 1.6 seconds already. I think there's a little bit of pace in that Nitro Motorsports machine. Yeah, there's there's no question there. There's a ton of pace left in Rafa Matos, I can promise you that. And uh, he was feeling it this uh, to, this morning there on the grid. I had a nice conversation with my old friend, and and um, and I he didn't have to tell me he's feeling it. I, I've known him long enough to know when he's got that laser look in his eye that he's not a guy you want to step in the ring with at that moment. Like he he he's here. He's here to deliver a victory for Nitro Motorsports because that's what Nick Tucker brought him into the camp to do. Bring me some victories, and also let's help these kids along the way. Let's show these kids uh, that the cars we're giving them, the same that car that you have, and and let's look at that data. Let's see how we can make the drivers that we have in our camp better drivers for their future when they move on from the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series into the, the, the next uh, journey on their career. Exactly. Somebody kicking up a little bit of dirt there, it looks like, on the exit of turn six and seven. 
But this is Thomas Annunciata still holding out ahead of Adrian Lostowski. Uh, or excuse me, Bacon's actually been able to get by Lostowski here at this point. So we're now resetting that battle a little bit. Yeah, and, and, and again, Rafa's eight-tenths of a second a lap uh, per uh, per lap on, on P2 of Jake Drew. So why we're not really watching what's going on up front, not much going on up front, but some dominance. But the race is right in this group right here. We're seeing kind of a little bit of a mid-pack race. Ben Mayer's backed up Thomas Merrill to, uh, you know, to the, uh, what does that Mosack right there look like? And it looks Do like we here a, we've had a, yeah. uh, Lostowski lost a little bit of, pace here at this point he comes down into the corner i think that may have been what we saw get kicked here's up our, here's our replay here here it is caleb bacon right there trying to do over under trying to get only thomas sheehan here's adrian following that All right, well, there we saw a little bit of what that was, but uh, nevertheless, the order has shuffled around here a little bit at this point as Connor Mozak has also fallen down through the order. He's in fifth. Now, at this point, that's going to promote Ben Mayer up into third place, Thomas Merrill into fourth. So that battle that we were watching, that is now a battle for podium positions. Meanwhile, Thomas Annunciata looks like he has been able to break, th uh, break free a little bit, and he's now clo starting to close down on Josh Hurley. I, I mean, absolutely right. And again, don't know what happened to Mosak. Don't know if Ben Mayer opened the door, and then that's how Merrill got through. And, and so there was a good battle going on up there. But the youngster of Ben Mayer, the 15-year-old kid, and how many times have you heard that in the Q3 uh, Architecture TA2 Series? 15-year-old kid is up there on the podium and looking to have, like, his career weekend so far in this great series. And, and just, again, to reiterate, Evan Slater, you know, that was the youngster that brought Q3 Architecture into this great series. And it was it was that. It was that was that passion is to is to launch the young talent. And that's what we're seeing right here. But all this young talent is being led by that crafty veteran of Rafa Matos. Yeah, it certainly is. And I mean, look at that gap. It's going to be nearly two seconds here at this point before everything is said and done. There you can see a visual representation of it. And look at Thomas Merrill there lurking in the background on Ben Mayer, really carrying that number 26 to the absolute limit of the track on the exit of Mission Food 16. He takes a peek, but not quite enough as the youngsters hard on the brakes, protects it for probably another lap, right? Because it's not going to be a much of an opportunity going through here uh not one that does isn't going to make thomas vulnerable on the exit i think the last thing thomas want to do is to try and maybe even leave himself vulnerable and give up that spot that he just got uh from connor mosak so it's all about getting one to get clear of ben mayor this youngster right here is an important move and welcome back, Map TV viewers. You join us as we continue to watch this battle play out for the uh, third place position. Now that Connor Mozak has had a little bit of an issue that we can't tell, but uh, Ben Mayer right now trying to do everything in his power to hold off a charging Thomas Merrill. But it looks like Merrill, after that move, has lost a little bit of ground, and now it may be Mayer that's got a little bit of a run on Jake Drew before we know it. So it's uh, what I'm seeing out of the 26 and the 80 uh, of Mayer and Merrill. What I'm seeing there, DJ, what I've been observing is Merrill's better on this half of the track, the S's and the faster stuff. And it seems like Mayer in the in the 80 car is better through the tight stuff. So the the tight section over there, when we get past, um, you know, right before our Bennett Bridge Hall S's, that three, four, five-ish area. Boy, I tell you what, that Ben Mayer is really getting through that section good. But as we get through those Bennett Bridge, Bennett Bridge Hall S's, that's when this 26 car really starts to come alive. And also Thomas, being the veteran he is, and with so much race left, he might be backing off to cool down things a little bit. That's a good point. I mean, he has just come through a couple of cars. He may not want to be in full attack mode here at this point as he tries to get everything underneath him. So we'll have to see what his strategy exactly is. Ooh, little Someone got to lock up. Yep. <laughs> Someone got to lock up. We both saw the same thing yep. at the same time uh, there, DJ. But, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, think, uh, I think that's what we're kind of seeing out of Thomas. One thing that you know when you've driven on these Pirelli P0s for some time, they'll hold a grudge. Like, if you upset the tire as a driver, they'll let you know. It's going <laughs> to keep holding that grudge on you. So you have to really – so I think that's where Thomas is at, if, if I'm going to speculate here, is he doesn't want that tire to hold a grudge on him when it's going to be real important and he's going to be asking a lot of it. 
Yes, yeah, certainly is here as they run there. We see the positions after 15 laps, everybody working their way on through right now, trying to see if they are able to get going as they run. Waiting, waiting, waiting for Jim Gallagher, working his way through the field. He runs in 16th right now, trying to see if he's got anything to push ahead with. And for the Barry Bowes fans out there, uh, you know, you might be wondering what happened to Barry Bowes, but he is out with power steering failure. So uh, he's out with a power steering failure, and I'm going to promise you folks the 16 turns around NOLA Motorsports Park are not going to be any fun without some power assist. So uh, I, don't, I don't care how much time you spend in the gym. I don't even think Jared, with those 18-inch biceps that he's got, <laughs> um, would be able to wrestle one of these things around NOLA Motorsports Park for 100 miles with no power steering. So sorry to hear that. Hate to hear that about Barry and have his day end, uh, end prematurely there. But this has been a clean race, DJ. Other than the, the little bit of skirting around that we saw at the beginning and the scuffle that we saw, no one has been putting a wheel wrong. The racing has been super clean. The passing has been super clean. They've been patient with traffic. I've been thoroughly impressed, as I always am, with the talent level here in the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series. Well, it, it, it's not just, I mean, that it's been a, a processional race. I mean, they, we've seen bumping and banging. We've seen good side-by-side -side action and passes and storylines through this race. To your point, it is just the level of class in this field that has been able to carry us on through. Now, my next question is, as we do look back a little bit farther in the field there, like your pro-am leader, Jim Gallagher, to cost of those drivers, they're starting to run into that territory where it's going to be a lap down. When are we going to get into that lap traffic, and how much is that going to play an effect on the rest of these fields? No, that, that, that's that's the key, right? That's what the radio communication is coming from uh, these leaders. You know, while Rafa's sitting there asking, you know, where how quick we catch it? What are their lap times? What am I doing? What's the gap? And then you're kind of doing the math in your head. What do I need to do? We all have a lap timer on our dash. It gives us a predictive on the dash, so we kind of know where we're going to be in our lap time. And that's really the art of finding traffic, is really timing it. it and it, that takes communication, because as a driver, you can't see everything that's going on out there. So Rafa, Matos, Thomas Merrill, the, the, the individuals that have been doing this. Whoa. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's getting tight between old uh, Gallagher and Mayer there. and. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 it's going to be friendly fire for Thomas Merrill because, you know, that's that's another Coke car is Jim Gallagher there. So uh, so I'm sure that Mike was on the phone there with, with Jim like, hey, you know, that 26 car, make sure that they get through there nice and clean and easy as well. And uh, But, yeah, this is a – you could throw a blanket over this top four right now because of that traffic. Rafa hit Jim kind of at the wrong place. He got he caught him in a, in a kind of a bad spot. The timing was a little bit off. But it was not the worst spot you could catch him either. The worst spot you could catch that traffic – is entering those Bennett Bridge Hall S's by far. Well, we just saw it there. Caleb Bacon trying to make a run on Thomas Annunciata, not able to get it play as Annunciata's stellar defensive drive here at this point continues on. He just knows how to place that car. And welcome back to the party, Adrian Lostowski. He is now in a position to be able to fight again here at this point, courtesy of Bacon trying to be able to get that move and it not going off into Cube 3 Turn 1. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're and, and back to your previous point, DJ. This has not just been like a, a procession. This hasn't been the you know a parade here at, at Nola down in the French Quarter. This has been <laughs> this has been real racing. I mean, and you don't you don't got to look any further than we had lead changes right off the beginning, and, and then Rafa got it back. Ben Mayer has climbed through the field from a P5 starting spot up to a podium. Thomas Merrill has climbed from P10 on a track that we know is not the track for passing. And he's climbed from P10 to P4. And then you see Connor Mosack actually take the steps and be passed and, and lose the pace and be going the other way. So, yeah, to your point, DJ, far from, far from a procession here. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Whoa, there's a little bit of tight running there, a little farther back down in the field. That was around Bacon, Lostowski, and Bochelle here at this point. And welcome back, drivers. Excuse me, our top three, I made a mistake earlier. Our uh, uh, pro, our top three pro drivers is Keith Prochuk, Jared Odrick, and Jim Gallagher. So great running there for Pro-Am. Really good to see Prochuk up on his 101st race in that top position. And then Jared Odrick, this would be his first podium. We've been talking him up this race. It would be, I tell you, that's going to be the awesome look on the podium, right? Because no matter what step you have him on, he's going to be the tallest guy. Right. He's going to be the dude there, but... Uh, 
No, I mean, it's just the, pers the wonderful personalities we have in this series, and, and Josh Hurley here is, is holding a really pretty wheel up there in P6, and, and I think, honestly, that Connor Mosack has backed Hurley up to Annunciata and that battle that's going on there. So when they um, when they all kind of caught the 16 at Gallagher there, it bottled that all up, and uh, and it brought Mosack into Hurley, and then this has all kind of kind of accordioned everything together and made, again, some great racing for us and the race fans at home. Yeah, I mean, it's put some great racing as now we see that battle with Hurley and Annunciata. I think you're right about that. I think Mozak has kind of backed him up a little bit. We'll have to see what tricks of the trade here that Josh Hurley has in his uh, uh, in his back pocket. You know, he was telling me yesterday, he was on the broadcast saying, I've got some good lines here, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. Well, Josh, we're going to see him now here at this point. So he's going to try to keep rolling that around. That's Mozak right in front of him who was running up in that top three. Not quite close enough here to get a run down to the corners. No, no, he's not, not, not been there for the fight just yet. And again, some of this could be some really crafty racing, really smart racers uh, all around this field. And this is kind of crafty at this point in the race. You got eight, you have 18, set, 18, you know, laps left of this event, 17 laps left of this event. There's a lot of racing left. There's a lot of tire that you're going to have to consume. A lot of brake you're going to have to consume. So there's some people playing the long game. And welcome back, Map TV viewers. We ride on board with Thomas Annunciata trying to take a look on the back of Josh Hurley. Not quite close enough to get it to play down into cube three, turn one. They've got to watch out, though, because Caleb Bacon behind this has looked very, very spicy as well. And if I'm Annunciata, I've got to have a little bit of chameleon eyes. As there you see the 20 of Hurley going a little bit wide through turn three. Is that going to open the door for Annunciata? No, the door is shut. I think we just saw Josh Hurley's line. I think we did. Yeah, yeah, I, think I think we did. We did. Just saw Josh Hurley's line. It was a pretty one, too. Uh, no, he did a nice, nice job there of, of making sure the car is wide at the right time. He, he's a uh, he's very crafty racer, Josh Hurley. Um, I've been so excited for him and Blaze to be hooked up. Look at this sneak down the inside. Thomas Annunciata doing a job there in turn six. Not your conventional passing zone here at NOLA Motorsports Park. The youngster throwing it down. Great job, Thomas. Nice, clean pass right there. That was textbook. That was absolutely remarkable. I did not expect that at all, but he just snuck it down the inside, and Bacon followed him. Yeah, he brought a little bit of a train with him, and, and I tell you what, right there, as a driver, Josh really is not expecting a pass right in that moment, and and that Josh had to hold the wheel straight longer than he needed, longer than he wanted to, and that would have left the door open for Caleb Bacon, and Caleb is a, Caleb's a shark out there. He's an opportunistic feeder. He's coming after you. Looks like we're going to be able to go back and take a look at the replay here at this point. Yeah, you just see, I don't think Hurley did anything wrong there. Annunciata just snuck it by him. Yeah, and Th Thomas just got a really, really good run through that section of the course and, and just took advantage. Yeah, absolutely perfect. As we take a look on board. Yep. Beautiful shot. I mean, oh. beautiful, beautiful pass. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Controlled. The whole bit. So it, it's it's uh, Thomas is really coming into his own with this racecraft. Um, that was that was some flashy flashy Q3 architecture coming at you. But yeah, very very good <laughs> stuff here. Yeah, very good indeed. And still this mid back battle, very very close. Drew has been able to separate himself from Mayer a little bit at the front. So this is really where the action is. Is now Caleb Bacon takes a wider line through turn four, trying to carry a lead bit more speed around there and into turn five just seeing if there's any breaks in the armor here on thomas annunciata i mean this is we got we got such a great battle here there's six cars in this battle for these spots anything can happen and you might be one i mean if you can look at the screen and know that we're why we're not covering the front it is a clinic out there for rafa matos on on jake drew and ben mayer but there's still a really good battle that could come from ben mayer and thomas merrill it seems like thomas merrill might have just kind of settled into that P4 spot, let things kind of cool off and see where that goes. But the battle is where we're at. We're on board with Adrian Lostowski in this uh, in his V-Box, his CMI onboard camera inside that Ford Mustang. He's trying to do battle with Josh Hurley here. These are two HAL cars here. These are two of the newer of the HAL cars. And uh, so it's good to see them go at battle right there as we have uh, some pretty good, you know, a parody within, within this uh, group here as you have uh, you know, your first two cars, Matos is driving a Coke car, and, and P2, Jake Drew, is in a Howe car. So, uh, and then you have two Coke cars that follow behind. But um, really, really good parity, too, and it, it speaks volumes to the series and 
um, and what they do with this Keep the Architecture T2 series. Yeah, it's exactly the kind of parity that you want to see between makes and models of cars across the board here to get everything to play. We jump back on board there with Lostowski as he kind of holds up the back of the train here in this battle. Annunciata up at the front of it, uh, currently in sixth place. Connor Mozak up ahead a little bit more. He's within touching distance, and I've got to think after the move he sent on uh, Josh Hurley that Annunciata, he wants that top five. Oh, he do he, he totally does. I mean, he is now. Now this is it, right? This is you know, this is your last 25 miles. It's time to hammer down. Enough of the conserving. We don't want to leave anything left at the track, right? We want to take. We want to leave all the tire at the racetrack. We want to leave all the brakes here, and and the team knows that we gave it our all. So right now is when you're just going to burn this thing down and let it rip, and and that's what we're seeing out of Thomas. And they're setting those lap times to to, to show it. Um, you know, Rafa is consistently still about a half a second a lap faster than the rest of the field, but the rest of the field, lap by lap, has just been really on top of each other from lap to lap. So uh, they're, uh, they're racing, you know, off of each other in some ways because they can't get the pass done because it is such, challenge, such a challenge here. But um, as we saw with Annunciata, you're just waiting for that mistake. And it doesn't have to be a one that we can even see in the booth here, DJ. It just has to be so slight and you can capitalize. Yeah, even just the slightest bit of correction could send him around as we've got a couple of more drivers going a lap down here at this point. I think that's Jared Odrick. Yep. Yes, it is. That's the number 81 machine. So that is going to be him a lap down. But here comes a little bit of a look from Penn Mayer. Is he going to go for it? No. Thinks better of it going down into cube three, turn one. Oh, but Jake, Jake Drew's eyes got real big in that rear view <laughs> mirror right then. And, uh, and, but, yeah, that was, that was some really good late braking on, on both of them and, and, and good driving on both, too, because uh, for Ben Mayer, that's not the time to go ahead and stick the nose up in there. And, um, and he knew it, and that was a move kind of wise beyond his years there. So, but uh, that, what that also shows me is Ben's got a little bit of pace, and Ben knows he's got some pace. And he wants to make this pass on Jake Drew so he can go after his teammate, Rafa Matos. Yeah, he wants to be able to put this down as there we see a move down to the inside of Jared Odrick. Going to be pretty simple there for Drew and Mayer. Odrick doing a great job there of just kind of sticking out of the way, being as predictable as possible. Exactly. That's all you can ever ask for uh, from anyone that, that is traffic. Plus, what a great school for him right now. He gets to sit there behind the leaders of a TA2 race and, and see what they're doing differently than him. This is like free school, you know, for uh, for um, a new driver, a fresh driver like Jared. So uh, this is really, really good stuff for him, too, to see where maybe he might be missing a little bit here and there. Yeah, exactly. As we now focus back in on that battle for P2, Jake Drew and Ben Mayer trying to see if there's going to be anything to have. And don't discount Thomas Merrill from this fight at all. He is up. He is involved in it. And he may be holding on to his tires. And so now, as you said earlier, Adam, this is going to be the point where if Merrill is holding back a little bit, trying to save that rubber, now it's go time. Now it is go time. Now, now it's drop the hammer and go. But at the same time, too, he's seeing a couple of eager youngsters in front of him. So he might just want to, you know, slide by while they're crying about what just happened <laughs> and not slip on the tears, right? So there, there's a lot of things going through a veteran's mind like Thomas Merrill because of what you're seeing unfold in front of you. So uh, if these two get to racing, that's going to bring him right up into it, and it's going to bring him up into it with arguably maybe a little bit fresher stuff. But at the same time, Thomas had to drive through a field. He had to make some moves. He had to use some of that tire when he maybe didn't want to. So he may be just settling in at that P4 and again, looking at the long term of the championship and where the championship sits. You know, Jake Drew, not a championship competitor, hasn't done all the races. Same thing with, with Ben Mayer. Rafa Matos is a different story now, so if he can just kind of minimize that damage and kind of take whatever is given to him today, uh, he'll take that. He's a smart racer. Yeah, another smart racer here, Adrian Lostowski, currently in a little bit of a battle with Gavin Bushell right now as they try to sort themselves out a little bit. It looks like Lostowski He's lost just a little bit of touch with Josh Hurley. He has. He has. He's uh, He's been, seems like he's been kind of struggling here uh, throughout the weekend. He's had some glimmers, excuse me, in practice and stuff like that and really kind of shot, but it looks like he's really struggling with uh, with the car, especially on the change of direction through here. It, it tends to want to toss, and I see a lot of roll in the car as well as compared to some of the faster cars up front. So. Uh, they just might have missed it by just ever so slightly. And in this competitive of a field in Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series, you can't miss it by that much, DJ, because 
it shows up on the racetrack as being much bigger. Yeah, it certainly does. But here at this point, Lostowski still trying to close on in. And welcome back, viewers of MAP TV. We ride on board ninth place, number three machine of Adrian Lostowski as he fires ahead. Meanwhile, battle starting to take place up in front of him as Thomas Annunziata has officially been able to catch Connor Mozak. Mozak, who sat in the top three for the majority of the race, has fallen down through the order after a mistake and just looked like he hasn't quite had the rhythm and the groove that he had early on. No, exactly right. I mean, and it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast. What kept us awake on Friday night was, what do we go with? What package? Like, do we go with the package that fires off strong and might damage the tire? Do you go off a package that's conservative and won't fire off as good? You don't know. Again, these are all those crazy intangibles that NOLA Motorsports Park brings us, um, that very few racetracks we visit will bring us. Actually, what's up next here in the Q3 TA2 Architecture Series uh, Worldwide Technologies Raceway, same thing, tire deck race. So it comes down to that knowledge and that understanding and getting through and getting it to the end. Yeah, it's going to be very, very tricky to see how they're going to be able to handle that as well. Everybody going to have to keep everything together there. As you mentioned, we do head to Worldwide Technology Raceway. And then, of course, we bring the big show back together for the Memorial Day Classic at Lime Rock. Very much looking forward to that one. Very much so. Very much so. We love we love our Lime Rock. We love our Memorial Day Classic. And, and yes, and my mistake, uh, folks at home, uh, Ben Mayer is full season this year. So my mistake. I thought that maybe he had missed one already this year, but he's been full season all year long. So that is another uh, definitely points competitor. So this is something that that's a position that Thomas won. And Jake Drew seems like he's gone ahead and separated himself. All he needed was that little bit of a look from Ben Mayer. And by Ben Mayer looking, he's like, okay, I'm going to drop the hammer, and I'm going to go ahead and leave this one behind me. Yeah, and we just saw there kind of a poke in line. We see another one here at this point from Annunciata on Thomas Mozak. I can tell you as well that Ben Mayer uh, had to withstand a little bit of an attack from Thomas Barrel. So we certainly said it's go time. The drivers know it's go time. They are pushing ahead. Everybody is in full attack mode. Yeah, you said it right there. Full attack mode is no joke. Uh, you know, we're going to see this. Thomas Annunciata wants to get by. Connor Mosack here, like you said, wants that top five position, and uh, he's, I've noticed his chill-out box is sitting there, it's not chilling out, it's just sitting there kind of bouncing around out there, I was hoping that that wouldn't come loose, because that comes loose, starts flying around the inside of the car, you can't keep taking that risk and, and driving around with that out there, so you can see it kind of flopping around, um, so hopefully that stays put and doesn't end up costing him something crazy like that, that, that that's just so frustrating uh, when something like that happens, but that shows you how violent this place is. I mean, these, these race teams, they spend tireless, tireless effort to make sure everything is fastened down. Everything is as clamped down as could be. And when you're around a track like this, Sebring, where we started off the season, um, I'd say this is like Sebring times 10. Because Sebring, you at least get a break, right? 17 and 1 is when you're bumpy. The rest of the track, you're pretty well smooth. Here, you're rough everywhere. It's just that Louisiana wave that we got going on. Yeah, and, well, and that was one of the things that Josh was talking to us about yesterday was the difference in the bumps as well. That at Sebring, it's much more of that going from concrete patch to patch to patch. And here, they come at you in those waves, as you just mentioned. Yeah, they do. They come in the waves. It's, it's, uh, it, it almost equates, I'm a huge Supercross fan, almost equates to, you know, the ruts, you know. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like right where the cars, I, I, like I said, I don't know how they got the bumps in all the wrong places, but it did. And uh, you can see Caleb's a little bit warm inside the car. You see him scooping the hand out there? That's to get some air inside the car. So Caleb's a little bit warm. It is a hot day out here, folks. And that's another intangible. you got to have your fitness all the way up. You've got to be conditioned for this humidity, conditioned for this heat, and the physicality of this track. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there, DJ. Out of all the tracks that we'll visit this year, this is the most physical we go to. Well, is it a combination of the heat, or is it also just because of the, frankly, flat nature of it that you're not really having any camber or elevation change to sort of help you get through the corners? Yeah, and you just don't get any rest time. Like, this straightaway is the only time that you're like, oh, I can finally just kind of rest. But you're still working a gearbox all the time you're there. You're still fighting the acceleration forces of the race car. Once you get through turn one, you have two right away. You have a little bit of a straightaway for three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or right on top of each other. And then before you know it, you're in these S's. And the S's... These, guys, these TA2 cars are entering the S's at 145, 150 miles an hour. That's a lot of speed. A lot of G-forces are going on the whole time. So super, super physical track, and then you mix the bumps in there with you, and you're trying to hang on to everything through the bumps. Super, super physical track. 
I call for me it was the most physical track that I'll be on all year long. Well, all right, there you go. I learned something new today. I would have thought it was Sebring for sure, but nevertheless, we ride on board with Thomas and Anciata as the battle is on, not only for fifth place with Connor Mozak up ahead of him, but Caleb Bacon behind as Bacon has been sort of a sneaky competitor here today. He's constantly been looking like he could make a little bit of a run and maybe steal a top five before everything is said and done. And that's been Caleb Bacon's game since he's come into this Keep 3 Architecture TA2 series. Uh, he is very aggressive, and he can show that aggression when he knows he has it underneath us. But if he's got a race car that he can't be aggressive with, he also is very mature in the sense he knows what he has, and he knows what he can pull off with it. And that That is also, that's that sixth sense of a race car driver. That isn't necessarily something you can train. That's something that has to come absolutely natural. So um, that's great observation that, that you make on Caleb Bacon, because I think he is sitting there just waiting to chop with the bit, because those two are going to get to race it. Thomas Anunciata is not going to sit back. He's not going to sit back and wait for lap 36. He wants to get going, and he wants to go now. As you can see right here, this is Thomas's part of the track. He just went ahead. I'm looking up ahead. He just went ahead and tucked his head up underneath, and he might do that same, try that same move that he did just a few laps ago to get around uh, Josh Hurley. Yeah, he very well might try to do it. Doesn't quite look like he was able to get it to play. Let's give a little bit of screen time and a little bit of love here to our leader, Rafa Matos. We haven't talked about him all that much, but the number 60 has been absolutely dominant since about lap seven of this race. Matos fell back a little bit uh, behind Jake, drew off of the restart, and then was able to fight his way back forward, get the pass done, and has been in control ever since. As Matos continues to lead down the back straightaway, putting a gap of nearly five seconds on the rest of the field. He's just in coast mode at this point. Yeah, he, he's doing this this Nitro Motorsports uh, Ford Mustang really proud. American Flagpole Ford Mustang, uh, Concord American Flagpole, I believe is what is what their sponsor is there on that car. And um, he couldn't be doing it more proud. And uh, I know that he's really proud to fly those colors and he's doing a and, and Annunciata, Annunciata got around Mosak, so we're going to get a replay on the pass of Annunciata on Connor Mosak. So let's take a look at this. Do the S's, gets a good run. X to the S's, going to dive down underneath, get that pass made nice and clean, clean commitment all the way through. And it seems like Mosak was able to shut the door and not lose any more spots than that. And that's pretty impressive considering Caleb Bacon was right in that train. Yeah, he certainly was. And, and we talked a little bit before about how easy it is to kind of get thrown offline there and, and how perfectly you have to time that run. So that's really a testament there to Thomas Annunciata to be able to get that to play. And we saw that start to play out a little bit earlier. He tried to set him up through six and seven, finally got it done into 13. He did. And, and I tell you, that his car's come in. His car's come in exactly how he wants to come in right at this time, right? He's got eight laps left of this thing, less than eight laps left. And I mean, right where he needs to be fast, he's fast and to make these passes happen. And then the most importantly is to open the gap up after the pass. The last thing you want to be is repass. You just work so hard to get that done. You want to make sure that you stick to your pace and you use the same marks that you had to catch him and pass him as it is to take off and leave him. So that's, uh, that's what we're seeing Thomas do right now. But he's secured himself a good solid top five position right now. And I've noticed the gaps open up within the second, third, and fourth place where Merrill has kind of lost touch a little bit with Ben Mayer. And welcome back to viewers of MAV TV. We ride on board with Adrian Lostowski, currently in ninth place, losing a little bit of touch to Josh Hurley up in front of him. But Gavin Bushell could be hoping to get that move behind him. Meanwhile, it looks like Connor Mozak, who just lost uh, a position to Thomas Annunciata, has got more trouble on his hands as the ever-present Caleb Bacon is now hunting down the number 77. Yeah, and Caleb, Caleb's hungry. He wants to, he, he sees that the 90 got around and took off, and, and he wants a little bit of that, right? Like, so... He's really, really fighting and wanting to get that. And, and don't don't count Josh Hurley out. Josh, our buddy, our colleague, he's right up the tail pipes of the number 18 car. And if I believe if that 18 is able to open the door on the 77, 
of Connor Mosack that, I mean, we might see that 20 car of Josh Hurley just go ahead and take advantage. Yeah, we very well could, and, and that would be an absolute boon here for Josh Hurley to be able to claim in what would be a seventh place position. Looks like Mosack's been able to get a little bit of his, his groove back down to him, but this is the same area of the track that led to his pass on the last time of asking. So Bacon's going to bring him down here, starts to close the gap a little bit as they come through the Bennett Bridge Hall S's. Gap coming down a little bit more. You see Bacon taking a little bit of that alternate line. I don't know if he's going to be quite close enough. Gap's a couple of car lengths here. Bacon's not going to take a look, and it looks like actually Mozak's going to go defensive. Yeah, he did a great job in making sure that that didn't happen again, right? Like, he, he didn't want history to repeat itself all over again and this close to each other. So he did a little bit of a defensive and, and, and didn't use up all the road to make it such an open door like maybe he felt like he did for Annunciata. And there's a name out there I don't think we've said yet. Eric Caton. Eric Caton is doing an excellent job in that Ray Skillman Ford Mustang. He is in P13. He is having himself a career weekend here as well at NOLA Motorsports Park. A shout out to my fellow Hoosier uh, and Eric. So really, really proud of him and the job that he's doing here this weekend as well. So great job, Eric. Well, we got three Hoosiers then we were talking about. So there you go, my friend. Uh, uh, but uh, I also want to give a, a big shout out here to Julian DaCosta. Remember, we saw him go off on that opening lap down and around turn three. He's been able to regain the car, get it back together, and he is still on the lead lap here at this point. And for this young driver, that is a huge boon as we've got side by side side here. That's Lostowski and Bochelle. Bochelle trying to make the move on him. Looks for the crossover going down through turn four, but Lostowski shuts the door. I tell you, it's like Adrian went ahead and, and put the move on uh, Gavin that was done to him earlier, right? right. Gavin shoved underneath, and earlier it was Adrian doing the same thing. I forget who Adrian did it to, but it was that great over-under move that happened right afterwards. So Adrian kind of stuck that back in his notebook, and when Gavin made the run at him, and did the same move. He's like, oh, I know what to do here. Got to cross that sucker over and I'll get you cleared. And that's exactly what happened. And that's the thing about it. When you're over there in that three and four complex, DJ, you can make that dive bomb move and you feel like a hero for about a second and a half. And then you see them cross underneath. And you're like, oh, no, I just let that open. What a great pass by Caleb Bacon up underneath. Moves aside. Connor Mosack a little bit. Used up a lot of the road. Left the door open. And our buddy Josh Hurley was there to pick up the pieces. You called it. You absolutely called it. And look at that. Hurley taking one of his lines that he very well protected yesterday. And now he's going to be on the attack on the back of, of Caleb Bacon here at this point. Going to push ahead. Tuck up right behind in the draft. He's going to be very close here at this point. I don't think he's going to be close enough to get the run. So let's go back and take a look at the replay here of exactly what happened and how he set this up. And same thing, I, I really believe that Connor is struggling big time, especially with change of direction. So this is not classic Connor Mosack here, where he goes backwards in a field. Uh, he's an extremely talented driver. He's won a lot of Q3 architecture TA2 races. So that was just, uh, I, I believe Caleb's working better at this time of the race and set it up perfectly. That was absolute textbook by the youngster of Caleb Bacon. And, and that group there. He, he timed it out right. He knew where he was quicker. He identified that and went after it. We're side by side here. Gavin and Adrian doing their thing. Yep, they certainly are. That's going to be Lostowski to the inside. Bochelle to the outside. Bochelle's going to carry a little bit more momentum. And that's Lostowski trying to see if he can hang in around the inside. It's not going to work out for the moment. Yes, it is. My goodness, big twitch out of Lostowski. And that's finally going to cost him the position. Wow, what a pass by Gavin. And I can also say this, racing against Adrian as much as I have. And he and I had an awesome battle last year at Nashville at the Music City Grand Prix. When you can run side by side like we did last year uh, on a street course, corner after corner, you know Adrian is one of those drivers you can trust. You can trust. He's at the limit, but he's not going to sit there and overstep it and ruin your race. So that was great racing by both of those. Hats off to both you gentlemen. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, and I mean, I talk about at the absolute limit. I think Adrian was a little bit sideways there coming through about turn six, and to be able to control that and not create a bigger incident there, massive, massive credit to him. Now as we look back at the front of the field, Drew Meyer and uh, Thomas Merrill here at this point running 2-3-4. We've been waiting for this fight to kick off a little bit. About, eh, let's call it uh, a four and a half laps left to go. I've got to think that we may see a little bit of fireworks in this part of the track before everything is ready. 
Yeah, I mean, we did last year. Uh, it, was, it was. It looks like it's brewing up to be kind of a repeat of last year here, and with the with second through third, uh, second through fourth places here. It's not going to take much, right? Like like Drew could easily go from from Jake Drew could easily go from second to fourth. Uh, on this last lap, Merrill could easily go from fourth to second, and and all this mix in between. So this is something, and and it's really coming out to be a really great battle. Rafa Matos has basically had a lapping day. He took lead of this thing and has just controlled it. He has got himself. He once he hit himself like a three and a half second gap, he just went ahead and went into like cruise mode. He just went back, backed off his own pace by about three four tenths of a second. And, and let that thing just kind of settle to that four and a half second. But what we're seeing here between Jake Drew, Ben Mayer, and Thomas Merrill, this is going to be a special race. Yeah, this is going to be the part to watch out for as this race winds down. Coming out of Mission Foods turn 16. Looks like there. Merrill's taking that line that we've seen him take more than a few times, really carrying that momentum all the way to the outside of the track. Little bit of move around, and here comes Merrill down to the inside. Thought about it. Nope. Oh, pokes back in the line. He's definitely, I, I feel like he's got more in the braking zone than Ben in front of him. I think Ben might have, might have taken some of that, some of his grip away, um, you know, being tucked up underneath Jake Drew like he was for the last few laps. Jake has kind of settled himself out and uh, put down a couple, another good, pretty decent lap to give himself a little bit of a gap. But I think the race is on here between these two Cope cars. Um, well, one's in the Nitro camp here, this, but it's still a Cope race car as far as the chassis goes in the 80 of Ben Mayer. But also right here, Thomas Merrill, he's in the factory Cope car out of that stable. Um, he is their 2022 champion, and he is definitely one to be reckoned with. Um, but this is gonna be, this, th this, is, this is our battle. This is our race. Yeah, this is fantastic. Oh, very scary run there for Merrill, though, as he's kicking up a little bit of dirt around the outside of the track. Yeah, you know, and then over there, it, it, that's kind of part of it, right? You, you, you slide the front a little bit. You're not going to give up on the throttle uh, because you're not losing momentum, and you know you're going to drop a wheel. So as long as, you know, and Thomas knows what to do, he straightens that wheel out right before it's going to drop, and you don't lose any of that momentum. You don't cross-correct over the track and have a bigger incident happen. But uh these, these three drivers right here, they're at 10 tenths right now. They know that there's three to go, less than three to go, and uh, they're, they're just giving it their all, like, like we've talked about. There's, there's nothing to be spared. You're going to leave everything you have right now on the racetrack. Yeah, we certainly are. Rafa Matos continues to lead here, though, as they come out of the final corner, looking to see what they're able to build up here, working down the main straightaway. Little bit of a defensive line. And welcome back, viewers on MAV TV. You join us with about three laps left to go from NOLA Motorsports Park. It is Rafa Matos with about a five second advantage over the rest of the field. Then it's Jake Drew, Ben Mayer, and uh, Thomas Merrill, second, third, and fourth. And this is the battle to keep an eye on. I think it's going to be a just opportunity of who blinks first here out of this group of drivers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly. It, from right now, we're if a caution came, the race, it, it would end our race. So we've had a clean race all the way through DJ. So it's not like anything's bunched them up. So everything is is at its maximum wear. Like the tires are at the maximum wear right now. The brakes are at the maximum wear. Pedals are starting to get soft. You're starting to pump the brakes to get the pedal back up to you. You're running off track a little bit because <laughs> you don't have the grip that you once had. You're overshooting the braking zone because you just don't have the grip that you had in the braking zone. The only one out there in this top four that's not experiencing that right now is Rafa Matos because he hasn't had to abuse his stuff to do what he's doing. Everyone else has had to kind of use up their stuff. And I believe Jake Drew, it came a little bit earlier in the race for him. He was very aggressive and he learned, I think, a very valuable lesson about his Keep 3 Architecture TA2 career is you got to kind of take it easy on this Pirelli P0. As, we met, as I mentioned earlier, it will hold a grudge on you, and I believe that tire has kind of held a grudge on him for most of the race. I mean, it has, but I've got to give him credit here as well. There hasn't been really an opportunity for Ben to make an attack here at this point. It looks like Jake Drew, yes, he got beat by Matos. Matos was able to get the jump on him, but I think after that happened, it looked like he did a great job of just kind of recycling, resetting his system, resetting the car, and he's been driving very consistently. Oh, he's been brilliant. He's, yeah. been, he's been absolutely brilliant. Please don't, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want my my comment to get misunderstood. He's been, he's been brilliant what he's done, but he's still learning. 
He's still learning the nuances of what 100 miles on that one tire is, what 100 miles of fuel burnoff does to a car, what heavy fuel does to that tire. You know, if you're abusive to that tire when you've got 35 gallons of fuel in the back, that's another thing too, because you just went ahead and accentuated it. So these are all things that, that he's picking up and learning, and, and, and he's got, they got the best one in the camp there. They got the leader of this race, the dominant leader of this race. And I, I, and I know Rafa, Rafa's an open book. He'll let them know where they could have been better. And, and, and not necessarily to Jake Drew, not a teammate, but to definitely your Ben Mayer out there. Yeah, and that's, as you said earlier, part of the reason Rafa was brought into that Nitro Motorsports camp, not only to win championships for Nitro, but to be that driver coach, to be that mentor to these young drivers, to build them up and to help them have a better understanding of everything. Absolutely, and and, and while I mention Matos, I got to give a huge shout out too to Tyler Casera. Tyler Casera is, is, is definitely a driver that should be inside one of these Q3 Architecture TA2 cars right now. We should be talking about him right now. He's coaching uh, at Nitro as well. So he's backing up. I mean, he's part of that information. And he's also overlaying the data that they have of the Rafa Matos as he's coming to the white flag here with one lap to circulate around our uh, NOLA Motorsports Park here. But that's also, Tyler Casera has been a huge piece of the puzzle. That's why we've seen Ben Mayer. Oh my gosh, Ben Mayer is slowing down. Slowing oh down. Goodness. Ben he Mayer is. is slowing down. I don't know if that could have been fuel. Uh, he could have brought, I mean, that's just, what a shame for the kid. Oh. Oh. And I was just getting ready to give the credit from Tyler Casera because Tyler Casera coaching that young man and, and having the, the race of his career. And, oh, I'm just gutted for you. I'm gutted for you, buddy. That is that is such a shame. As we see Boris Head Jr. leaving pit road. So he's had himself an issue here today, folks. If I can get any kind of information on what happened there, you know we'll be certain to share it with you, DJ or myself. Yeah, we certainly will. It looks like their mayor has been able to pull off into the runoff at the exit of turn one, so we will at least stay green for this final lap here at this point. So that's good news. There's a look conveniently parked right underneath our camera. Yeah, not sure if that's fuel or what exactly that was there for Ben Meyer, but oh, heartbreak, when, heartbreak for the young driver. And when you and I, I only say fuel, folks, because when you go green to checker without a caution, Yep. You've been wide open the whole time, been fighting, and and you sometimes you can be gone out, you can run out of fuel. Yeah. It just happens on these on these green to checkered races like we experienced here at Nola Motorsports Park. Again, huge hat off to our competitors here. To at a place like this that's this challenging to go clean, to be caution free. Um, I'm just really, really proud of this series. It's absolutely incredible here, and it's a testament to the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series. But Rafa Matos in the number 60 comes out of the final corner and crosses over the line to take his first victory of the season. The multi-time champion returning to his winning ways here at NOLA. Jake Drew, Thomas Merrill, round out your podium in what was a very fiercely contested podium. And let's keep our eye here, because this battle Battle's not done yet at this point. Is this is Connor Mozak and Gavin Bochel trying to get a run coming through the final corner? Let's see if Bochel was able to do it down to the inside. He's going to power his way ahead. It's going to be a photo finish. Who had it? Uh, it is, it's Bochel. Bochel got, got it. it. Wow. Wow. I mean, what a drag race. And and I tell you, it's you know that's a SLR car that Bochel is in, and uh, that's actually Connor. That's Connor Mozak's old car. That's Connor Mosack's old car that just beat him to the line. Uh, so that's that's that insult to injury. But again, I know that I could tell, you know, when you look at the camp and you look at, at Silver Hair and everyone get, getting the, the cars that they get, I do, I do believe Connor ran into some sort of mechanical issue through the race that he was absolutely hanging on to. And uh, so hats off again to all these competitors and what an amazing job they did over 100 miles at NOLA Motorsports Park. Such a physical, physical place. As taking his victory lap, here is Rafa Matos around this 2.7 mile facility. He is bringing his way along. And this could very well be the start. He's always a title threat here, Adam. He is always a chance to win the championship, and I think this can be the start of a very beautiful thing for Rafa Matos. It is, and it's dangerous, right? Because, like, you know, if he when he gets a strong start, I mean, mid-season is when we come into his wheelhouse. You come into Mid-Ohio, Road America, Watkins Glen, where the guy is almost unstoppable. 
and then you have him in this Nitro Motorsports car, which proved last year to almost be unstoppable at those places. I think this is where, when I looked at the, when I when I saw this deal come together over the winter, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I know who my picks are if I'm going to Vegas because um, this is uh, Rafa. Rafa is Rafa is a generational talent. There's no other way around it. He does stuff with a race car that you just admire, and. Um, and he raises the game, the level of everyone around him. These youngsters are, they have, I don't think the young drivers that come in here will realize it until much later on in their career, how important it was for them to race Rafa Matos at this point in their career. Because you just usually don't get to race someone at that quality at this level. Yeah. At this point in your career. And he's, and, and so, and, and Rafa has found his home in Trans Am. He loves this series. This is, this is, this is the Rafa Mato series almost to him. Like he, he loves being here. He lo- it's a family to him. So, um, so yeah, really, really big, big hats off to this Brazilian. He's American, actually. You know, he's American citizen. That happened just a few years ago. But the Concord American flagpole Ford Mustang and Rafa Matos, ladies and gentlemen, at home, cheer him on. He's a great man. He's great to have there. Jake Drew, the youngster, right behind him, uh, replacing Connor Zillich, the phenom. Who's uh, I believe he's I believe he's a Coda with Trackhouse right now watching MotoGP. <laughs> I believe is where Connor Zilich is at. So um, and then you have your your P3 spot there of the 2022 champ Thomas Merrill delivering on the promise that Mike Cope gave us before this race started that that car was going to the front. Yeah, certainly did and gave us that little bit of inside information and certainly came true as we watch Rafa Matos stepping out of that number 60 here at this point. There you heard the wahoo from Rafa as we go down to Jim Weed Victory Circle. Hugs all around for that team and a well-earned victory converting pole position to a win here in NOLA Motorsports Park. Wasn't able to lead every lap but led the most and led the ones that matter. And I do believe he becomes the uh, first Q3 architecture TA2 driver to win in all three chassis. I think you're right about that. Now chassis and M1 chassis and now in a Cope chassis. So now Rafa Matos, again, add to your legendary, my friend, my brother, because you are a legend. There it is. And to find out more about the legend, we throw down to Ben Sissel. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Rafa, unofficially right now, you are now the most winningest driver in the Cube 3 TA2 series from pole to checker flag, but it wasn't that easy, was it? Yeah, it took a long time to get the 21st win. The last one, it was mid-Ohio last year. We were very confident coming to this race. We had a very fast race car. Heads off to the Nitro Motorsports crew. Nick Tucker assembling this team. There's a lot of talent in the team. It's a group effort. My crew chief, Mark Durgin. And every single member of the team, you know, hats off to Chris Tyson allowing us to compete at the highest level with the Concord American Flag Pole Company. And, uh, you know, just a, a really happy day for the team. It should be a really good, good day for the points. And, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get a few more wins, you know, and, um, you know, fight for the third championship. Nice. I love it. Well, Rafa Matos with Nitro Motorsports. So good. Now, Jake Drew, this is your second TA2 race finishing second and what a fight it was yeah for sure uh p2 drew again there huh? uh, super happy to be here with silver hair and chevrolet and everybody uh it's super cool being in my first time here at nola and getting a good finish for these guys and just improving as much as we can um i'm learning so much every week and i'm just having a blast in these ta2 cars nice i love it well jake drew thank you so much congratulations the ta2 series i'm so glad that they brought him in so ben mayer come here thomas youtube thomas one of the veterans in here, and we were talking about the young guns. Well, this time, I was so proud of Ben Mayer. What a fight out there, keeping this champion behind you the whole race and then just heartbreak at the white flag. Yeah, me and my crew chief have really been working hard on this car to get it to go fast all weekend, and it showed, and we were running up front, and bad things happen sometimes, and we just broke on the last lap, so hopefully we can run up front next time, and that doesn't happen. But he was right on me the whole time, and I was – just, I, I wasn't, I was pretty nervous just to have him behind me, but I was excited with how I performed. Nice. Well, hey, Thomas, let's talk about this 15-year-old and the talent that's out there on the track, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was a hard race for us there, coming back from 10th, but really proud of the crew for uh, working hard last night and getting this thing back in, in good working order. But what can you say about Ben? This kid's come so far in such a short period of time. 
Um, it was a pleasure watching him drive. He, he drove he drove like a seasoned vet. So um, I was really actually sad to see him have that issue on the last lap. I think he deserves better, but he'll be there again later this season, no doubt about it. Nice. And this HP Tuner's car, man, all over the camera, you were kind of the story to watch early on and then later on in the race as well. But thank you so much to Keith Procheck for providing that, and the Cope team did a great job with you. Yeah, big thanks to HP Tuners, and congratulations to Keith for winning in the Pro-Am. That's, that's a big uh, milestone for him, so really proud of the HP Tuners cars today. Nice. All right, well, I'm going to throw it back up to you gentlemen in the booth, and we're going to get going with our Jim Weed Winner Circle. Well, thank you, Ben. It's always fascinating to be able to hear from those drivers. And as we said, absolutely heartbreaking there for Ben Meyer to be able to have that run. But a great run here today for Rafa Matos, who was able to take his first victory of the year. Jake Drew and Thomas Merrill rounding out that podium. Annunciata having to fight and claw his way through. Caleb Bacon in fifth. Josh Hurley, sixth place. Gavin Boschel, Connor Mozak, Adrian Lostowski, and Keith Pro. Chuck taking your Pro-Am victory here today. Eric Caton was 11th, and then Julian DaCosta, remember, he was the driver that we saw go off earlier on in the race. He was able to recover to a P12. Mayer was P13. Boris said Jr. with some problems, and then the rest of the field there, Gonzalez Gallagher, Odrick Sheehan, and Bose, all of them multiple laps down here at this point. There we take a live look at Jim Weed's winner circle. But before we go down to the podium celebrations, we get ready to take a look at the race highlights from here today. It was an absolutely fantastic race that started off here with the drop of the green flag and three wide action as Jake Drew, Connor Mozak, and Rafa Matos got their elbows out going down into turn one. Thomas Annunciata got a big hop at the curb in a long battle with Adrian Lostowski. Jim Gallagher worked his way forward here and Annunciata sending moves left, right, and center. He was not to be denied. That to me was the move of the race down into the inside of Josh Hurley. Annunciata on the charge once again down into the inside of Connor Mosak. Got his elbows out a little bit there to be able to make that work. Side by side between Bochelle and Lostowski. Gallagher looped it around at the end, unfortunately, but it was Rafa Matos that was able to take victory, his first of the year here today at NOLA Motorsports Park. A fantastic run for him. As uh, we get ready to be able to celebrate podiums here in just a few moments' time, and now we go down to Jim Weed, Winner's Circle, and Ben Sissel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's hear it, New Orleans. The Q3 Architecture TA2 Series. Come on, New Orleans. Let's get a little bit loud. That was a fun race. We are here at the NOLA Speed Tour. This is going to be another history-making podium here with the Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli. We are going to start in the Pro-Am. And now... The louder you get out there, I haven't been impressed so far, but the louder that you get out there, the more we've got some cool Cube 3 stress balls to throw out. Let's see who can catch. Come on, somebody get loud. Oh, come on, you got to try harder than that. Estelle, come on now. All right, here we go, the Pro-Am, ladies and gentlemen. This shows you how rough, how wavy this track is and how much fitness you need to have because this gentleman straight out of the NFL was winded when he got out of his car. Third place in Pro-Am. First time here on the podium. Let's hear it. Jared Odrick in that number 81 CB race cars. Wearing that black underwear shirt. So excited to have him out here. It's an honor, sir. Welcome to the podium. Nice job. Crazy race. In Second place, and listen, you got to get really loud because his wife is here today. Second place Pro-Am, let's hear it, Jim Gallagher. Jim Gallagher with Cope Race Cars, Regulators. And then in first place, HP Tuners, Pro-Am doing really well in the Pro-Am. Let's hear it, Keith Procheck, ladies and gentlemen, that is our Pro-Am. Come on, New Orleans, get a little bit louder than that. All right, guys, not to put you on the spot. Jared, I know you got a broken thumb. Let's see what kind of arm you got. Come on now. Throw out some of these Cube 3 stress balls. Who needs one of these things? Come on now, get loud. Get proud. Come on, Pro Chuck. Let's see what you got. Press cubes. Cubes. 
cubes. What did I call them? Oh. Stress, yeah, cubes. Hi. I don't know what I'm talking about up here, but thank you. Audric, man, crazy race out there. And, you know, you, I know you're in good shape, but you look a little winded. That's a rough track. Yeah, these uh, these shoulders don't actually help in a race like that. Uh, you know, I've actually been doing my best to try to cut weight. You know, I played at 305, 310 uh, my whole career. And so racing has given me a lot of new disciplines and new objectives. And I'm just thankful to be here. So thank you. And thank you, Black Underwear. And thank you, Trans Am Series. Nice. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Jared Odrick showing us how it's done. First time in Pro-Am. I'm tangled up here. Sorry. There we go. Jim Gallagher, you know, we spoke. You uh, you started at the rear of the field, worked your way up. Now you're on the podium here at New Orleans, and your wife is here. That's good stuff. Super cool. Glad she's here. I want to thank uh, <laughs> Regulator by Waypoint. Uh, I want to thank everyone at Cope Racing, especially Rebecca, who I listen to for 75 minutes every race. And congrats to Keith. Nice. He was a little grumpy before, so hopefully he's in a better mood now. <laughs> Keith Project, HP Tuners, you still grumpy, or how was your race? Here, take the mic from me. Yeah, I feel a lot better now. I was actually a little grumpy beforehand, but uh, it, was a, it was a great race. It was a, a tough uh, turn two and three. There was a bit of contact. I fell back to the rear. Ended up, I raced uh, Jim and uh, Jared for quite a bit, and, uh, yeah, they raced really hard, really clean. Uh, it was really cool to have a, a full green race. Uh, it really tests you. Get, these cars are really hot. Uh, so I just want to say thanks to uh, Mike Cope and the entire team. Thank you guys, 10 years. Um, and uh, congrats to Thomas Merrill for uh, third as well. Uh, great HP Tuners representation. So thank you. Nice. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on now. Let's get loud, New Orleans. Come on. Jared Otter, Jim Gallagher, Keith Prochuk, and Adam Andretti in the booth was saying this may be the most physically challenging track on our circuit. There's no rest. There's waves everywhere. Hold up the cube three, stress cube. Sorry about that. All right, come on now, New Orleans, let's get loud. Jared Odrick, Jim Gallagher, Keith Prochuk. Throw them out, throw them out. Throw them out, there we go, there, there's an arm, I love that. All right, now we'll, we'll change hats. Nice job, all right, New Orleans, this is your chance. Come on now, get loud, get loud, New Orleans. Jared Odrick, Jim Gallagher, Keith Prochek. Nice job. Oh, champagne. Uh oh. Let's see what they do. Oh, they're going for it. Oh, look at that. Keith Prochek, who is a Bears fan, right into Jared Odrick's eyes. <laughs> Hey, nice job. Thank you, thank you. Keith Prochek, nice job, man. That's going to help out the points in the Pro-Am. You're good at NOLA, man. Nice thank job. You. Jim Gallagher, nice job. Have fun. Are you uh, presenting the trophies? One, uh, two and three. Two and Gentlemen, now we've got the National Series. I need New Orleans to get really loud because we've got some history here. Our... 2022 Q3 Architecture TA2 Series champion back up here on the podium hard fought in his beautiful HP Tuners Mike Cope Ford Mustang. Let's hear it. Thomas Merrill, third place. Oh, New Orleans, you got to get louder than that. Come on now. Second place second race in the Q3 Architecture TA2 Series with Silver Hair Racing. I was talking to, to Laura with Silver Hair Racing just last race, and she was talking about the talent that he is, and she was absolutely right. Let's hear it. Jake Drew, ladies and gentlemen, second place, second race. Unbelievable. And then presenting our first place, Ladies and gentlemen, John Claggett, president of Trans Am, the person that has resurrected it, worked for Trans Am for 40 years. This is his last race with us until the Circuit of the Americas. So let's hear for John Claggett, first of all. Come on up here, John Claggett. John Claggett is here to present the trophy to the Concord American flagpole, two-time Trans Am Ch TA2 champion, Rafa Matos, for winning the race. Let's hear for Rafa Matos. It is my distinct pleasure to be able to hand this out to the Cube 3 
top finisher, 21 wins in history. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Let's hear it. John Claggett, yeah, when the champagne comes out, yeah. So, Thomas Merrill, you had a battle there, and you were comfortably in fourth. I thought, honestly, you were going to finish fourth. Ben Mayer had the best race I've ever seen. So proud of Ben Mayer. Went out at the white flag with a mechanical, and then you were able to take advantage, which the veterans do. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it today. We uh, we made life hard for ourselves by uh, by not showing our best in qualifying there, but uh, full credit to the Coke crew for putting the work in and getting us back in good working order. Um, and, yeah, shout out to Ben Mayer. That was the best race I've ever seen him drive, like he said, and, and he didn't deserve that. So I'm sure we'll see him up on the podium very soon. Nice. I love it. Well, Thomas Merrill, HP Tuners, Mike Cope Race Cars. Come on, get loud. Come on. we clapping. Yeah, there we go. Jake Drew, you know, the whole Silver Hair crew were telling me the talent that you are and to be up here in your second race, second place. Nice job. Yeah, I just got to give a huge shout out to Maurice and Laura. We wish they were here with us. Uh, they're having a weekend off, I guess, but we're having fun out here in NOLA. And I'm just super happy to bring home a clean car in second, uh, in my second race in this series and just having such a good time in this car. Nice. I love it. Thank you very much, Jake Drew. And then Rafa, take the mic. Tell us about your race out there. Well, the, the race went pretty well. We, we felt we had a very fast race car since the beginning of the weekend. And, and hats off to the Nitro Motorsports team. I think Nick Tucker does a fantastic job assembling a fantastic team. There's a lot of talent in the team. Not only, not only on the drivers, but the mechanics, the crew chiefs. There's a, a lot, a lot of talent. And the, the race went well. Um, you know, I, I had a pole position, obviously, but got past in the beginning and, and waited the, until I burned some fuel in the car. Gain, gained some balance and, uh, you know, went to overtake Jake. Uh, it was a, a clean pass and, and, you know, built up a gap and just managed to the gap throughout the race. And, uh, you know, just a, a really good day. Proud of the team. Proud of Concord American Flag Pole Company, you know, allowing us to compete at the highest level. And uh, 21st win, baby. I was waiting for that one for a long time. And, you know, it's been a minute. And uh, hopefully it will be the first of many this season. And we'll, we'll hopefully pave our way to our third championship here. Nice, I love it, I love it. And talking about history, I believe that makes Rafa the most winning driver in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. So let's hear it. Thomas Merrill, Jake Drew, Rafa Matos. What a race here at the NOLA Speed Tour. All right, I need you to hold it. Uh-oh, hold up those cubes. They kind of look like Mario Brothers cubes. I like that. Little pixels, yeah. Q3 Architecture TA2 Series, Thomas Merrill, Jake Drew, Rafa Matos here at NOLA Speed Tour. Come on, NOLA, let's hear you. I thought this was like a party city. You guys sound like Salt Lake City. I thought this city liked the party. All right, now, New Orleans. Yeah, who wants a hat? Thomas Merrill says, who wants a hat? Let's go. Oh, Nick. No, all right. Oh, Jake Drew. Oh, look at that boomerang. Hat. There we go. All right. He's in the wind's going. Oh, Rafa can throw a hat. There we go. Rafa wins the hat throwing contest too. All right, New Orleans, last chance. Let's get loud. Thomas Merrill, Jake Drew, Rafa Matos. We've got three championships up here and probably a future championship. All right, wait, before we get going here, before we get going, where's John Claggett? No, come on, John Claggett. You might go to, uh, he doesn't want to go to the airport smelling the champagne. You want to, you want to sit out on this one? But you're getting, you're getting to be armed too. If you behave. You're, you're getting, you get to be armed too. So, John Claggett, I have absolutely loved working with you. Such a mentor to me. Thank you so much. And uh, that's the checkered flag on you. How you feel? I uh, feel, feel great. We've had uh, nothing but great competition for a long time with wonderful racers thousands of workers that have worked these races and i'm blessed to have been a part of it nice a huge part of it the leader the captain all right go crazy ladies and gentlemen john claggett thomas merrill jake drew rafa matos <laughs> oh they were nicer to you than i was expecting john claggett yeah but now john claggett don't get pulled over on your way to the airport because that's going to smell funny Hey, I love you, man. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Just me, for me personally, my personal life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this 15-year-old was fighting off some seasoned veterans in the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. 
and our Omo Legato fastest lap goes to the number 80. Let's hear it, Ben Mayer, ladies and gentlemen. Ben Mayer, man, so proud of you. What a performance out there. I know it's not the finish that you wanted, but man, that's got to feel good. Uh, yeah, my car has been great this weekend. I'd like to thank Brad Parrott. It's really like, this is my first time up here, so I'm super excited, and my car was so fast. He worked on it all night, and same with the Nitro crew and my crew, so it was really, really good weekend for me. I'm happy with how my car was. I'd like to thank Bowie Marine, Simrad Ride for helping get me here, and I think I can have some pretty good results in the future. Of course you can, because in my opinion, you kept one of the fastest TA2 drivers in history, a former champion, Thomas Merrill, behind you pretty easily the whole time. So nice job. Let's hear it for Ben Mayer, ladies and gentlemen. He is going to be on the podium with us again here in the future. Congratulations. All right, I am going to throw it back to everybody up there in the booth, but we're going to celebrate a little bit more. So DJ, take it away. All right, to take it away, I will. Thank you so much to Ben, and congratulations again to all of our uh, uh, podium sitters there at that point. A fantastic race on store. Make sure to stay with us here through the rest of the day on Speed Tour TV or, or uh, tune back in on MAV TV as we continue to go on. Make sure, though, to watch on MAV TV a little bit later on in the week, Thursday, April 18th, as we have the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series and TA presented by Pirelli. Make sure to tune in for those. And thank you to all of our viewers on Speed Sewer TV. Make sure to stay tuned in on Speed Sewer TV. We've got some more racing action for you on the day. Another SVRA race as well as Formula Regionals ready to head out onto the track. But it is going to be absolutely fantastic action as it always is here at NOLA Motorsports Park. We're going to take a quick break, but I will leave you in the capable hands of John Fippen when we return. Simba. There's Boris said. One of the ways you overtake here at Sebring is really good in the braking zone, like this one right here. And look at that! Oh, no. Both go around. There's the green. We are back and at it. Oh, oh, watch this. Oh, look out. Miller, look out. I'm going 